Warning, this footage contains explicit advanced cloud chasing builds. Do not attempt these type of builds without understanding safety precautions involving voltages, currents, resistance, and ohms law. For your discretion is advised. Okay, today guys, we are going to make a zipper fuse clapton. Essentially, we're going to be fusing wires with two twisted wires with opposing twists. And there are a couple things you guys are going to need for this build. First of all, you're going to need an anchor with a couple of swivels. I use the ball bearing swivels. A couple of them hooked together. That way, if one catches, you have another one to keep the rotation going. A drill, pliers, scissors, wire cutters, ceramic tweezers. Gloves and cotton. I like to wick with gloves on. Got an Allen wrench for my atomizer, which is a twisted messes. Got some screwdrivers, one to coil or to wrap around. And I got these other flat heads to maybe do some prying if I need to. I got some 36 gauge and I got some 24 gauge. And today, we're gonna be dripping Rut Vapes Honeysuckle Apple Crisp. Handcrafted juice. This is gonna be going on a Dimitri. So to start, I already went ahead and made two lengths of 24 gauge. I straightened them out. If you don't know how to do that, you can check out Atomic e Sig's other videos like the Dragon Skin, Stagger Fuse Clapton, and the Fuse Clapton. Now we're gonna take a bunch of this. This is 36 gauge wire. Very skinny. And you're gonna need a lot of this. You're gonna pretty much stretch it out double length of what your Clapton wire normally would be. And then we're gonna twist it. And then we're gonna do that again the opposite way. I'm gonna grab this and stick it in my anchor. I have this clip in here so I could have like something stationary rather than have the swivel that moves around. Just gonna do a couple knots in here so it stays. Now I'm gonna walk away while that holds that there. I'm gonna do a little stretch of wire. I'm going to cut that. I'm going to stick it back in my anchor and I'm going to pretty much pull so it's about half, the anchor is about halfway down. I'm going to grab my drill, set it in the drill and I'm going to twist it. Keep note of which way you twist it because when you do this again the other in a bit, you're going to twist it the opposite way you just did it. And I'm just going to twist this for a fair amount of time. Keep it from whipping around. If it whips around too much, that's a lot of stress on my wire and it could break. This stuff is really thin. Okay guys, so, so now guys, we got our long twisted 36 gauge with opposing twists. And these are what are, we're gonna be fusing with. So let's get our two lengths of cancel that we cut earlier. We straightened and cut. I'm gonna go ahead and mount these inner swivel. Nothing too crazy, just enough so they're in there. And when you put tension on this, it's not gonna come unraveled. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the excess so when I get to that point, I'm not gonna get stabbed. On this side, I'm just gonna go ahead and make an L. Me about a quarter inch up, both of these wires. I'm gonna stick these in my chuck. Make sure that both wires have the same amount of tension. You don't want any slack in either one of the wires. Cause if you do that, then the slack's gonna start building up toward the end and it's gonna become difficult when you start trying to fuse them. And there we got a little something slack right there. What I do is just go to this side, pull it tight, and then both wires in the chuck, just tighten it down. See, as I pull it, it's not coming unraveled over here. I can put some nice tension on it and we're good. Now we're gonna take both of these wires that we just twisted. I'm just gonna lay them out behind me. One on one side, one to the other side. That way when they start clapping, they don't start trying to twist on one another. It doesn't matter whether you have the rotation of one on one side or the other. Just make sure you situate them so they are not together. I'm gonna go ahead and make an L on these and then I'm gonna hook them on that L of those wires we just put in our truck. I'm just gonna go ahead and fuse these two wires with these two twisted wires. But we got a little twist there. And here we go. Okay guys, uh, we're all done clapping and fusing this all up. The amount of twists I had for each wire wasn't the most consistent, but for the purpose of demonstration, it's fine. This is just a tutorial to show you how to do it, and then you could improve upon how to do it your own special way. I'm just gonna go ahead and snip this off with a swivel, and then off the drill. And we're gonna show you some macro shots. Shout out to D. Hurst. Wood Mods, Anarchist Wire. Shout out to Atomi E-Cigarettes. Shout out to Tony Montana. Shout out to Shijin Juice. Shout out to um, my mom. I love you. Okay, so um, as you know, when you fuse and stuff, it can get some twists within the wire. So I'm just gonna go ahead and undo those twists the best I can. Stick it back in the chuck, hold the wire, and spin it. You're spinning the opposite way, right? I'm spinning the opposite way of the twist to get it unspun. And I think that should be fine. Do some macro shots here, guys. Starting with this. Because that's what happens when you get impatient and the wires start wanting to twist all by themselves. I call that the wire, oh my god, a messed up wire. 
Okay, here's our wires guys. I hear some screenshots of what happens when it's right and when it's wrong and they start twisting over each other. I'm gonna go ahead and clip off the not so good part. And for, um, as far as cleanness goes of the, the way I did the wire, not the cleanest job, but for demonstration purposes, it, it'll do. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that in half. So I have two wires. And what I'm also gonna do, is I'm gonna wire this with a 24 gauge sleeper. Pretty much I'm gonna wire, I'm gonna have a parallel 24 with these coils. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these like I normally do around this screwdriver. I believe it is a three millimeter. So I'm just gonna keep a, a nice amount of tension. So there's minimal amount of slack with these wraps. And the 24 is not, obviously not gonna be as much meat as this. So every once in a while, I'm gonna go ahead and tug on that to make sure all my wraps are nice and tight. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a full wrap. Okay, so that's all nice and wrapped up. Gonna go ahead and with the twisted messes with this post layout. You know, you have your four holes. I like to set my coils a little higher, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of lead work early on, which means I'm gonna go ahead and take one of the leads, bend it like so, and that should do for now. Go ahead and clip off the excess. I can go ahead and do the other. And here's a macro shot of that up close. Looking all pretty. Okay, so we got our coils all wrapped up, all looking pretty. I'm just gonna go ahead and put these in their posts. Once they're in their post, they're kind of off to the side. So what I like to do is use that little lip of the screwdriver to center it. Once I tighten the screws down, I'll be able to pull the slack out and I'll have a little more stuff to work with to actually get it centered to where I want it. Okay, so now I got my wires all cinched down. Means I'm gonna be able to use a screwdriver and pull. And there's a lot of metal we're working with here, so it's gonna take a little bit of force. Also gotta be careful not to put too much force or else you break those outside claptons. And if you do use force, I tend to kind of use my thumb to literally grip that whole set of wraps. So I'm putting less, my, my pressure's kind of more spaced out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the excess. I'm gonna do the pull, get the slack out, and I'm gonna do the push to center it. It gets the job done as far as showing you guys how to do it, and then you can do it better than me, and then you come out with your own videos, and then I will subscribe to you and give you some likes. Look at that color. As you can see guys, because the big amount of metal that we're working with here, there's a fairly good amount of metal just in the regular coils, and so the regular zipper fuse coils, and that kind of takes some time to ramp up because there's so much metal. And that's kind of why I wanted to parallel it up with the 24 gauge. I guess it's called staged heating, and that 24 is gonna heat up and fill in that ramp up time. Get it all nice and tight. screws again because when you do move around screws tend to need a little more tightening okay so we're gonna wick this bad boy up get my gloves on what's the weird taste oh it just needs to be broken in no not with gloves that's the oils from your hands getting all up in the cotton so I do I guess what they call the Scottish roll I'm gonna take a really thin sheet from my Japanese unbleached organic cotton. And I'm gonna roll it really tight, really tight. None of that folding stuff, I'm, just, I'm gonna roll it from the get-go. Get all evenly rolled to a little bit bigger than you think what would fit through the coil is what works best for me. And you rip, just get that all together. Then I cut that in half with my scissors. Pinch and twist, compress, stick that puppy through. And the way I wake, I literally put too much cotton on purpose to the point where I to thread it through like it's a screw. When I do this, I could literally run my cotton bone dry Y. Bone dry, bone dry white without a hint of a dry hit. Maybe bone dry and then I'll get a dry hint of a dry hit, but pretty amazing guys. You should try this out. Other side. Let me hit that. It's a little dry. Oh, is that a 200 watt sir? Cut these down down to length. I like to cut them a little bit. I like to have my wick ends enough to where they reach the bottom and a little bit extra so when you have them down, they kind of poof up. But I don't like to do that whole tuck and fill the whole well with juice because then I don't feel the cotton can soak it up as fast as faster than it could leak out. We're ready to juice this guy up with some pipe vapes. Honeysuckle apple crisp. See how tasty this stuff is. Saved. I think this stuff's so thick. Pretty dang thick. Let's get a drop shot. Get all juicy. A little bit of 
flow there. It's all good. Look at that plume. That's yummy. You guys want to try this? Man, that thing runs through juice like a beast. Tim Forbes, everyone. Shout out to Tim Forbes. Nice. It's really appley and crispy. And it's like savory too. It like kind of like rolls over your tongue, the flavor. Cloud comp. Cloud comp. I'm time like a beast. Thanks for joining us. I hope you like that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, also, special thanks to Joe. You guys can follow him on his Instagram. I'll put it up. You'll see it on the right hand corner. Um, also, shout out to Shijin Vapors. Shout out to TMT Tony Montana's Juice. Shout out to Dale Hurst Wood Box Mod Designs. He has some really dope boxes. And also, shout out to Anarchist Wires. Check them out. And um, yeah, if you guys want to stick around, we also still got um, a bunch of other videos that's popping up on the screen. Some tutorials, some vape tricks, or some vape skits that we're working on. And we're doing something kind of like the office kind of but more like um vape shop if you get my drift kind of like that scenario well whatever just stick around all right i'm still waiting s2070134 <laughs> check it out tim forbes mr notebook man it was us what time is it Hammer time, 1.45. Yeah. PM or AM? AM. Okay, cool. Dedication, compassion, I mean, passion. Who are we doing this for? We're doing this for you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and me.